Hello everyone, I am Ron and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Alright, so what we're going to be doing today is creating the uh, explosion effect that is inside of our missile command strategic defense kind of game. So if I shoot, boom, we have a little explosion going on. I get carried away pretty easy, so I'm going to keep shooting. Okay, enough of that. <clears throat> so we're going to go over how to create that two that two dimensional explosion in Photoshop. So go ahead and open up Photoshop. Um, if you look at my original, uh, I'm actually in my programming folder here. There we go. So if you look at an explosion <coughs> in this particular animation, you can see that um, it starts out small, gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then by the time it reaches the end of its uh, expansion cycle, the uh, center of it starts to collapse, the energy starts to dissipate. And if you look at um, an explosion, think about what it really is, is it's really just a pressure wave. We can observe pressure waves in nature. Um, for example, a ripple in a pond, it exerts the same kind of uh, response as an explosion would, except instead of moving through the air, it's moving the wave is propagating through uh, water. You can look as it starts, there's like a, a big boom, and then it pushes out. As the energy in the center kind of dies, it levels off. And the same thing behind the wave, as there's less energy behind the wave, as it moves out, this kind of dies off. So on and so forth. When you look at an explosion, there's a few other things going on. You have the the pressure wave from the explosion itself, you have the fire, which is consuming the oxygen, and it's also being pushed by the wave, so it's expanding. But the fire can only go so far, and there's only enough energy to really serve it for so long. So you have the effect of the wave spreading out, and then of course the fire dying as it's propagating. So the edges of it start to dissipate, and the center of it kind of collapses more and more and more. And this is the effect we're going to create. So go ahead and start a new document. You can go ahead and name this explosion. Uh, I have a couple of these made. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and name this one if I can spell today. I'm going to do underscore B, actually. I had some issues <clears throat> with uh, naming conflict, so I'm just going to go ahead and do Explosion C. Inside of the game that I'm, I'm doing, it's uh, the world is 640 by 480. So, depending on the size of your game, determines the size of your explosion. Whenever you're making something and for your game, you always want to work from the most detail you can, the highest resolution you're able to, and then work your way down from there. You can always scale it back down. In our case, however, <clears throat> since we're working inside of Allegro, and we're actually working Allegro 4.2, I'm going to go ahead and start it off at 40 by 40. And I'm only doing this because I know once I scale this down, I'm still going to have to go back, and it's going to cause... Uh, double the amount of work for me. Depending on your, your package, um, like in the future or whatever, you might not have that kind of conflict. Alright, so we're going to start off with this. Uh, by the way, control and plus or minus will adjust the size, your zoom on your uh, canvas here. Double click on the, on the lock to unlock it. And I'm going to come up here and grab two colors. I'm going to grab yellow. And then I'm going to grab my second one and make this red. 
The reason I'm picking these colors is, well, if you look at an explosion, we can kind of Google one if you want. And I always recommend looking at reference images. Well, if I Google Google, that's not going to help, is it? Um, all right. The primary colors inside of a explosion are yellow and red, right? And then the orange in there, of course, is the mix of the two. So I have my two colors. You can do this a number of ways. You could do a filter, a render, clouds. Let me zoom that a little bit. You can kind of get this effect. But I don't like the way this is blending, so what we're going to do instead is I'm going to clear this back out, fill it in with white. All right. <clears throat> Come over and grab my paintbrush. If you don't see your paintbrush, you might have the pencil brush here. Make sure it's the paintbrush tool. It'll say brush tool. And right click on the canvas. You can select your brush. Any of these speckled brushes will work just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and dial down the size. And then with one of my colors selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit a dab in the center. Change my color. I can even change my brush a little bit. Whoops. I do like that. Back and forth. Now I'm just going to make a few passes until I get something that I'm happy with. And I'll say that's a good start of my explosion. The explosions are somewhat circular. They don't have to be perfect because it's as the fire of the explosion is grasping at the oxygen, there's more explosions going on, so it's just kind of fluffing out. So, let's say this is our frame one. So I'll go over here, I'm going to name it. Oops. Double click on the word. I'm going to say frame one. Now before I make my next frame, I want to expand my canvas over some. So I'm going to go to <coughs> image canvas size. I'm going to go ahead and pin this to the left so when it expands this one will stay to the left. Change this to percent and if this is one uh, frame and one frame is a hundred percent then if I need to make this worthy of six frames simple math tells me that it's 600. We're not going to change the height. So go ahead and OK and it'll just expand our canvas out so we can have one frame after another. I recommend doing it this way so that you have an exact amount of uh, pixels here. And the reason for that is as you go and you're making 2D images to for whatever game library or game engine that you might be using, um, it's easier for whatever kind of sprite grabber that you have that's grabbing these images off this page it's easier for it to function if you know where this image shows up on this page. If you have to kind of guess, you're going to have buggy results and you're not going to not going to like it. You're going to pull your hair out trying to figure out why is this, you know, image grabbing halfway through this image. Well, the reason for that would be you have the wrong pixel size. So knowing what size your frame is will help you as you animate. Okay? I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to hold down alt on the keyboard. Make sure I have my layer selected, click and drag. There's my second frame. Frame two. Now don't work ahead and get carried away by making all of your frames at once. We're going to go to one frame and then the other, and we're going to work and then go to the next. So we're on frame two. I'm going to hit the eyeball so I can clear this so I can see the boundary of my frame. Because anything outside this frame is going to get cut off by the sprite grabber. Okay. Grab my brush again. And I'm going to just kind of expand out this little circle. Uh, click off my canvas. There we go. OK. 
Okay. Now that I'm happy with this one, I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard and make sure I have my Move tool selected. Make my next frame. And this frame has to be a little bit larger, so let's expand this. Shut frame 2 off. And it's okay if it's not perfectly circular. Um, it can be a little oblong, which is fine. But it should be more circular than square. So. Okay. That's frame three. Go ahead and name it. So here's my first three frames. Boom, boom, boom. Now as this starts to expand, once we get past um, frame three, and you want, you want to kind of plan ahead, I know what I'm going to be making. So I, I figure this particular animation will take about six frames. Depending on what you're doing, how big of a project you're working on, uh, if you're making a character, you're making um, a bullet, a missile, a machine gun, whichever, uh, consider how many frames you're going to need of animation. Try to plan ahead and figure out where your keyframes are going to be. The keyframes are what we're going to be using um, later on for how to block out the primary positions of your of your animation and you kind of fill in the in-betweens. For example, if we were keyframing this, we would start off with our first, we'd get to our middle, and we could do our last one, and then we would kind of fill this in. But as you're working, you got to also think of the animation itself. And I know, based on the way a ripple kind of works, the way an explosion works, um, the way the pressure wave sort of works. And again, research is always the key. If you need to know something, Google is a wonderful tool. Look it up. Um, so plan ahead on how this is going to work. Since I know that as this gets to its maximum size, the center of this is going to start dying out. So when I copy this one over for frame four, go ahead and name it. I'm going to press D on the keyboard to get my black and white. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush. And I'm going to, I know that as I'm on frame four, the center of this is going to start dying out. Okay. Now the reason I'm using white instead of the erase tool is Allegro, at least this particular version of Allegro, does not handle transparency very well. So instead of cutting it out and making it perfectly transparent, we're going to be using um, the magenta color for cutting out any unwanted pixels. So we want this to be as solid as we, as we can get it. We could fill this in with our clear color and Again, we're, we're working in Allegro, but if you're working in a different kind of package, your clear color, color could be white, it could be green, it could be, you know, purple. Whatever your particular program is using, um, you can always change it. In Allegro, you're more than welcome to change it, but not many things use the particular shade of magenta that we're using, so that's why it's kind of a safe color. If we wanted to clear out white, then anything that had white in it would be erased, and that would cause a problem. The other reason I'm not using my clear color on here right away is when I make this flame, since it does blend a little bit, it's going to blend on a white background, and this is going to be a little bit brighter than, say, if I did this on a magenta background, and then all of my reds would be really pink, and my yellows would be more orange. So that would cause a problem as I'm animating. So, all right. Whoops, wrong one. So that's why I'm using white. Now this frame, frame 3 and frame 4, as you can see, are the same. You don't want them to be. Once you start clearing out the center, you want to start changing how the edges of this look. Because the fire isn't going to stand still as time passes. It's going to continue to be wispy, continue to, to evolve and 
move around because this energy is active. It's, it's alive if you think of it that way. So I've got my paintbrush. Change the size of my brush a little bit. Flip my color. And I'm using this little arrow down here to flip the color in between. If you get lost on that, that's what that's how I'm switching this. Okay. Switch back to white. And the reason I'm switching back to white is I want to do some trimming on my edges here. Oops. It helps if I have the correct color. Grab my red and yellow. And you're the artist, so you are welcome to do this any way that you like. I'm just kind of being picky on how I want the shape to be. And it's always different, which is fine. You can have a few explosion options inside your game, so you're not always seeing the same animation. All right, so I'm going to take this one. Let's copy this one over. Frame 5. And frame 5 is going to have a bigger center. So, D on the keyboard to bring up our white. So frame 5 is going to have this bigger splotch. And kind of the way this collapses in on itself doesn't have to be perfectly circular either. It can be a little bit odd shaped. And then I'm going to grab my colors, grab my yellow, grab my red. And the more time you take on this, the better your results are going to be. I'm just kind of flying through, doing this at random here, semi-random. And now for our sixth and final frame. Hmm, looks like we have an issue. Let's take a look at our canvas. I'm just going through checking the spacing of my frames. Aha, found one that wasn't quite spaced where it needed to be. <clears throat> Alright, so in our last frame, we're at the point where the center of our, of our explosion, of our wave, has pretty much died down. There's no energy left here. And the only energy remaining is just on these edges. So, I'm going to grab my, my brush hit D on the keyboard, bring up my white, and switch it. Oops, helps if I'm on the correct layer.
get rid of my frame there. You also want to make sure you're not going outside your frame because whatever is outside the frame will be cut off by your sprite grabber. All right, grab my other one. Then I'm going to change how these edges are. So I have yellow, so I'll hit all the reds. Don't mind me, I'm going to go back and adjust. And that should work for our sake. <clears throat> six frames. So frame number six. All right, so this is good enough for me. Now what we need to do is add our, um, our clear color, basically. In our case, since we're using Allegro and our clear color has been defined as this uh, hot pink magenta color. We are going to go ahead and drop this in, starting on frame one. Go ahead and drop it in. Frame two. Drop it in. And if you have a hard time remembering what this, what these values are, it's 255 red, zero in the green, 255 blue. And you can always just drag the sliders all the way up or down to achieve the color. You want to make sure it is exact because Allegra is picky. Frame 3, go ahead and drop it in. Frame 4. Grab that centerpiece. Frame 5. And frame six. Okay. Now that I have it to this degree, I can't speak tonight. Now that I have it to this degree, I'm going to zoom in. And this is where it gets kind of tedious. We're going to have to come in, and anywhere you see these little half pink pixels, the ones that tried to be completely transparent but are not, we have to remove these. Again, Allegra doesn't handle transparency very well, so we are going to be helping it along. Make sure in your brush tab you have your pencil tool selected. This will allow you to draw a solid uh, brush color without any transparency trying to be blended in. And I'm just going to come in and just very quickly cut away any of these partially invisible bits. This is a little bit tedious and when you're making hundreds and hundreds of these it can very much be so. Okay. 
again, depending on which game package you're using, you might not have to go through this effort. I've continued doing this. Every game that I've made using 2D animated sprites, I've always gone through this process of clearing away any of the unneeded bits from my clear color. I can't recall if it's necessary for every single um, engine that I've used. Oh, it helps if I'm on the correct layer. I can't recall if it's necessary for every engine that I've used, or any SDK that I've used, or um, library. But I remember doing it for each one out of just out of habit. So um, it's a good habit just to get in, so you can understand the nature of editing the pixels and all of that good stuff. Because the more time you give to your your artwork, the better it will be. Right now we're probably going to put in maybe about 20 minutes, half an hour to making this. So it's going to look about as good as the time we invest in it. And that is true with pretty much everything that we do in life. And again, I have to grab my correct frame. I'm a little on the extra tired today. All right, grabbing these guys out of here. So if we were to try to run this inside the game as is, without clearing the, these little bits off, we would see a pink outline on our fire, on our explosion. And that shouldn't be there. <clears throat> It destroys the illusion that it's real, and it takes us out of the game. The whole idea of uh, doing game design is to immerse the player into the world that we're creating. You know, we want to make that person late to work. We want to make that person late to school. We want them to be invested in what we're creating. And the only real way to do that is to make the world as seamless as possible, just like a dream. The more convincing the dreams are, the more, I guess, more powerful they are. They suck you in and don't let you go. I remember being in 11th or 12th grade playing Soul Reaver. and not wanting to get up or go. It's a very repetitive game, but I really enjoyed the world, I really enjoyed the story. So... There wasn't really anywhere else I wanted to be at the time. It's one of the reasons I got into game design, was how uh, how moved I was by the story that they created. and all these ones on the inside. It's okay if you grab a few extra pixels. You really won't notice in the grand scheme of things. Jumping on the frame 6 here. Now if you want, you're more than welcome to fast forward through all these uh, boring bits, but you will probably have to go through this effort on your own on your image anyway, so. The more you learn, the better you will be. What's uh, fascinating is, <clears throat> at least for myself as I'm looking back, 
in all the years that I studied this, learning from uh, from different books and going to school, no one taught me this. This uh, going through and cleaning the pixels on an image, it wasn't taught to me. That was trying to create these images that I had seen you know, in the books that I was reading and having this nasty pink outline. And I learned right away that I had to get rid of that outline. It was going to destroy what I was making. So I went in and I just kind of did it the hard way, figured out what pixels to get rid of. With that being in mind, you're better off, in some cases, doing this in Illustrator, just because it does create slightly sharper um, pixels. Photoshop tries to blend everything together, and that can be an issue when we're working with this. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here. <clears throat> so let's assume we're happy with this. I'm going to go File, and make sure I save the PSD file. In the event that I want to come back and modify these layers, I can. Okay. Now I have to save this out as a 24-bit bitmap. So there we are. Depending on which version of Windows you have, you can save it out as 8-bit, uh, 16-bit, uh, 24. Allegro, this version of Allegro doesn't do um, really anything too extensive, so you don't have to save it out as 32-bit unless you're really doing um, alpha channels but we'll get into that later. So, save that. Oh, look, this is the one, um, the other explosion I, that I made. I named it Annie. I play a lot of League of Legends. Um, and it was saving weird, but anyway, that's kind of off the topic. This is going to be explosion. underscore C for me. And here are your options. 24, 16, 32. <clears throat> this version of Windows, I'm in Windows 7, is okay with 24-bit, uh, though sometimes it does get buggy and want 32. So just keep that in mind. If it doesn't show up, you might have to change your um, your settings. Okay. So inside our game file, I'm going to the main here. Uh, you guys in class should have a greater list of different files because we've, we've broken this program up into several several files already. This is an older version, but it will run what we're looking for. So I need the explosion. And I need where it's actually called. So let's go to load or declared. Um, explosion. There we are. Yeah, change Annie to explosion underscore C. Hmm. Well, fine. I will save it as something completely different. Allegra is complaining. Oh, let's do... I'm running into a naming conflict with the uh, objects, as I'm calling them. So I'm just going to call it that. And there's the explosion we created. Boom. You can see a little bit of pink outline that's still left over. 
just like in these buildings here, you can see the pink that didn't get removed. We'll have to go through and clean those up. But there's a very quick explosion. To get the smoke trail, um, you guys are going through your code packages right now. And when you look at your thing and it says, hey, you know, you, you need a smoke trail. To draw the smoke trail, we're going to do it the same way we did the explosion. So we'll take our explosion image, except we're going to do it grayscale. To kind of cheat the system, you can take all of your explosion images. If you click on image 6, hold shift, click on image 1, you'll grab all of them. I'm going to hold alt, click and drag. I'm going to copy all of these, right click, merge. I'm going to name this one smoke. And then these guys, I'm going to grab them again. I'm going to put them down in their own folder. And I'm going to have this one be explosion. I'm going to turn the explosion off, grab my smoke layer, and real quick, I'm just going to grab my paintbrush tool, or sorry, my magic wand tool. If you don't see the magic wand, it's right underneath the lasso, and you might see quick selection. You can just click, hold, grab magic wand. I'm going to grab all of the pixels of this and you can hold shift and just click on a new spot and it'll grab extra pieces. I'm going to grab all of those bits that I don't want and I'm going to cut them out. Okay. Go up to image, adjustments, black and white. There we are. And now I will once again drop in my magenta color. You can do this on a separate layer. You can create a new layer and just fill it. I'll just call that clear to color. <clears throat> and then you can also test this out to see how it'll work for the extra smoke. Let me zoom in real quick. I just want to see if there's any weird pink pixels. There's like one there. Um, but overall I think it'll be fine. File, save, save as. I'm going to name it as smoke number three. And where there's fire, there's smoke. At least inside of the uh, the new program, there will be. And the um, and the one you guys are working on, uh, it should be uh, version two four. Wherever you have your your load um, explosions or load missile, you will also have your explosion and your smoke. My smoke is hidden uh, obscurely, randomly, somewhere else in this program. So I'm going to go to uh, smoke. There we go. Ah, my smoke is inside my rocket. It's an odd place for it to be. No organization. This is why I went back and reorganized everything. Smoke free. All right. And there's the smoke. You can see the pink outline. There is some left over. But that's the effect that we just created. Boom. Boom. Still kind of cool, though. All right. In the next video, I'll show you how to make these buildings here. Have a good one.